we're going to look at uh, two types of variation problems, uh, direct variation and uh, inverse variation. And uh, variation problems deal with the relationship between two variables. Um, and so, for example, if y varies directly as x, then the bigger the value of x, the bigger the value of y. So uh, this, this blue function is an example of a direct variation where v y varies directly as x. So as x gets bigger, y gets bigger and bigger. Um, if, if y varies inversely as x, um, which you might hear it called uh, like y varies indirectly as x, um, inversely makes more sense to me. and uh, That's what I heard most often from um, science people. If y varies inversely as x, sorry about that, um, then the bigger the value of x, the smaller the value of y. So this is an example of that. Um, where as as x is increasing, then y is decreasing, right? So the the relationship can be described. The direct variation can be described like this: y, if y varies directly as x, then y is x times some constant, which we can call k. Um, so in this case, the constant was two, right? Um, but the constant could be anything. So th this is why if, if something if y varies directly as x, that's the same thing as saying y is proportional to x. Right? It's, it's x times some number. So it's proportional to x. Uh, if y varies inversely as x, we've got y um, is equal to some constant over x. Right? So the key for solving these inverse or direct variation problems is figuring out what that constant is that defines that relation. So you set up set up the problem um, either it's something you know like this kind of in this kind of equation or this kind of equation based on whether it's a direct or inverse variation, and then you kind of go from there and fill in the specifics. So this is this is the general form of a direct variation, and this is the general form of an inverse variation. So let's try this on two examples. Um, so the velocity of my supersonic rocket, Space Ceratops, varies directly, varies directly, with the time elapsed since its launch. Okay, so let's just describe this generally. So it's it's a direct variation, so it's going to be uh, something like this. So the velocity varies directly with time elapsed. So we're going to say let's call it v is equal to some constant um, times the time elapsed. Let's call that t. Okay, so that's the basic idea here. We don't know what k is though. Um, so if its velocity is 100 meters per second, 10 seconds after launch, how fast will it be going 15 seconds later? Well, in order to answer this question, we need to know what k is. Uh, once we know what k is, if we know the velocity, we can figure out time. Or once we know the time, we can figure out the velocity. But we can't figure out. Um, we have to know at least two two pieces of the puzzle here, right? to solve the third. So if its velocity is 100 meters per second, 10 seconds after launch, so if its velocity is 100 meters per second, uh, 10 seconds after launch, so k times, uh, the time is going to be 10 seconds. Um, how fast will it be going 15 seconds later? Well, let's figure out from this, just the first bit of information, what k is. So we can just solve for k. So k, k is equal to 10. So now we can be more specific with our equation. Uh, the velocity varies directly as time, and here's how. Velocity is equal to 10 t. So that's the constant of variation, 10. OK, so how fast will it be going to 15 seconds later? So we want to know velocity um, 15 seconds later. So 15 seconds later than what? Well, than the 10 seconds. Um, so in other words, how fast will, will it be going 25 seconds after the launch? Right, so if it's going 100 meters per second 10 seconds after launch, how fast will it be going 15 seconds later? Meaning, how, how fast will it, be, will it be going 25 seconds after the launch? So V is equal to 10 
times 25 seconds. So V is equal to 250. Um, and velocity from the word problem we know is measured in, in meters per second. Meters per second. All right. So the steps are, one, figure out what kind of variation is occurring. Is it direct variation? Is it inverse variation? Is it joint variation? Is it combined variation? You know, those are later topics. Um, okay, and then based on what kind of relation is occurring, then set up the general form of the equation. Use some specific information. So if, if V varies directly as T, and you're given a pair of V and T, you can use that to figure out what is that constant that shapes their relationship. So use that to figure out the constant, get more specific with your equation, and then you can use it to solve other other questions. All right, let's try another one. Um, let me move this up here. The force of gravity acting upon an object varies inversely as the square of the object's distance from the center of the Earth. Yes. Assuming the radius of the Earth, okay. So let's 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 do that part first. The force of gravity, let's call that F. This is a true story, by the way. This is kind of just made up. This is a true story. Uh, force of gravity, let's call that F. Uh, acting upon an object, I should say, acting upon an object near the surface of the Earth, uh, varies inversely. As, so inversely as the square of the object's distance. So the other variable is going to be distance, and it's going to be um, the denominator of this ratio here, distance, so because it's an inverse variation. Now, it varies inversely as the square of the object's distance, so it's going to be d squared. Um, and then uh, this is an inverse variation, so it's you know some constant over d squared. This is our basic idea. The force of gravity acting, you know, also, aka weight. Uh, weight is just uh, uh, a measure of the force of gravity acting on an object near the surface of a planet. Um, so the force of gravity, or the, the weight of an object, is um, inversely, um, varies inversely as the square of the distance from the center of the earth. Okay, so assuming the radius of the earth is 3900 miles. So here's where we can so um so now we can plug in some specific inf information. So the radius of the earth, so meaning the distance from the center to the surface. So we're talking about the force of gravity of of an object. Let's just, let's just draw me. I'm going to be I'm going to have a green head, and green arms green legs and a green torso. The force of gravity acting on me is inverse varies inversely as the square of my distance from the center of the earth. Um, so and that distance is just the radius. Okay, so assuming the radius of the earth is 3900 miles. So we know this distance is going to be 3900 Uh, and we're going to square that. And I weigh 150 pounds at the surface of the Earth. That's the force of gravity on me. Um, so, I so 150. So my force is going to equal. Let me just move. Oops. Right. So uh, the force of gravity acting on me, meaning my weight, is going to equal uh, some constant over 3,900 squared. So that's enough information to solve for k. So what I can do is I can take um, 39, I can square 3,900, okay? So I'll get this large number. I would multiply both sides of the equation by that to get k by itself. So I'm going to multiply that by 150. So k is equal to um, some large number. I'm going to do that in scientific notation. So 
k is equal to what do we have here? Um, like 2.2815. times 10, okay, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, times 10 to the 9th, okay, I'm just writing that like that, it's a little easier, um, okay, so that's K, but I might leave that in my calculator just to use it in a second here, okay, so that's K, um, so the question now is how much would I weigh you know, what would the force of gravity be on me if I tunneled my way 200 miles toward the center of the Earth? So if I'm digging down like 200 miles this way. So my distance from the center of the Earth would, would go down by 200, okay? So I want to know my force, the force of gravity acting on me, if my uh, distance now has gone, you know, I'm, I'm, I've, I've gone from 3,900 miles above the center of the Earth down to 3,700 miles, so down 200 miles. So 3,700 miles squared. Um, and then uh, K, you know, so K will be over that. So I, I'm just going to move it over there because I don't feel like writing that again. Um, so I'll just take that number, which is still in my calculator conveniently, uh, and I'm going to divide it by. 3,700 squared, and uh, my weight would be, or i.e., the force of gravity acting on me would be 166.65. Um, 166.65 uh, pounds. And pounds is a measure of the force of gravity acting on me. So I'd gain some weight by uh, digging 200 miles down towards the center of the Earth. Pretty strange. All right, so that's uh, direct and inverse variation. That's how you translate uh, those types of problems into equations. Um, yeah, and they're, pr they're pretty fun, actually. Um, and these, uh, these are useful. Um, um, in science, quite often, in my studies, I, I've seen that um, scientists like to, if, if they're talking about some kind of relationship, instead of saying out the whole equation, they might say, some, such and such varies inversely as such and such. Um, and, you know, it's important to know what they're talking about. So, all right, good luck.